Hi, everyone. Uh, we are here with uh, Mr. Brad Miller at uh, Perry, Mer Perry Meridian High School. Um, today is another wonderful day uh, on the series of uh, For the Good of the People. Uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, take something from this, uh, um, this chit-chat today. Uh, it's more of a, a, a more of an interview, but we hope it's more of a, a podcast type interview here today. Uh, and I um, want to introduce real quick to uh, Mr. Miller, uh, maybe a few words of, 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 uh, of introduction uh, and see what uh, you want to say a few words about how you came about, how, you know, how many years have you been here okay. uh, as a school counselor and, and, and just a few words of whatever you want to say. All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much. Um, I feel very honored to be interviewed today. Um, as he said, my name is Brad Miller. Um, I live in the community. We've lived here for many years. Um, both of my daughters graduated from Perry Meridian High School, one during 2020 and then one in 2023. My wife is also a teacher in the district at Winchester Village. She's oh. a first grade teacher. And so I have been working here at Perry since 1999 as a school counselor and then more recently I'm the school counseling director here. Terrific. Wow. So you've known our community for years. Yes, here, Jim, from, yeah. from the infancy of when Terrific. families began coming here well, to Perry Township. We're in the right place. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. And as you know, uh, with the series, we're digging into a bit of a, a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, many of uh, our fellow citizens have the opportunity to have their grandparents, uh, aunts and uncles, to sort of pass down some of the advice and ideas uh, for their kids, uh, mm -hmm. for example, as a high schooler mm -hmm. uh, or, or a college student for that matter. For many of our, our groups, it, it's a first generation. So we're coming to you uh, for or some of the things that our high schoolers might be able to take uh, with them as, as they go from 9th to 10th and 11th and so on and so forth. So, Today, we're hoping to discuss some of the foundation uh, 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 subjects that they would need to know for colleges and trans exams uh, and possibly. So um, with that theme, uh, what are some of the, 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 the topics or some of the exams that they need to know uh, if they're pursuing a college entrance or college admission? Uh, and knowing that one university will be different from another and college will be different. And today, then you mentioned earlier that the SATs and ACTs probably are not as much uh, as important or uh, most colleges don't use that anymore. And, and so what are some of the things that we should know okay. uh, as a 10th grader, as an 11th grader, mm -hmm. or a senior mm -hmm. uh, in general? So in regards to college testing, um, in re as far as admittance, um, there are two exams that are primarily used. The SAT looks like SAT, as yeah. you said earlier. Yeah. And so that is a test with two parts. There's a math component and an English um, component. Um, both of the tests are scored, a maximum score would be 800 on each of those. Mm -hmm. So your highest score you could get on an SAT is a 1600. That's like a perfect score mm. that a student would get on that. Um, if you look at the average of what that test score, mm. the average from the last testing cycle was a 1028. Oh. And so that was combined with a um, score from the math and score from the writing. Mm. Um, the test runs approximately three hours long. And um, there is a section um, where no calculators are allowed. And um, that is generally what the majority of our students are mm. using for college entrance. Mm. Colleges will accept either the SAT or the ACT. So it looks like ACT. Mm. So ACT is what, what we call it. That test is developed by a different company. Mm. And that test is approximately three hours long as well. But they, they basically test English, math, reading, and science. So there's a few more components on that, and a calculator is allowed on all sections of those. And so some students take both. Some students just concentrate on one or the other. It really just depends. 
um, when I was in high school a few years back, uh, 80s, um, we were encouraged to take uh, a, a few tests of SAT. Is, is that still the recommendations? In other words, I think we were allowed to take maybe twice a year or is this the best score out of three or is it how does that work for 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 a for score okay as far as the scoring goes they're called super scores and so they would take the highest score from each test so if you had a higher score in the math the first time you took it and then the second time your math score was a little bit lower but your reading and english score went higher mm -hmm. they would use the two highest scores from oh. those exams so they're going to the college admittance people will look at it as what, what's their strongest part of right. any of those tests allowed. Um, um, as far as when you take those, most students are taking those exams the spring of their junior year. Mm. Um, and a lot of kids could retest in the fall of their senior, senior year yeah. of high school. Okay. Um, many schools across the country in preparation offer the PSAT. Here in Indiana, the state has offered that test for a number of years for free mm. for all 10th and 11th graders. So that's the practice for the SAT. And that is um, to kind of give students an opportunity to feel what a three hour test is. Absolutely. To make it kind of what are the types of questions they're asking. And so one of the resources the College Board has come up with, they're the creators of the SAT, is the Khan Academy. Mm. They partner with, and that's, um, that's actually uh, something lots of students can use for tutoring for a mm -hmm. number of study, uh, for a number of study subjects, excuse mm. me. And so you can actually, after you take the PSAT, you can upload your scores to the Khan Academy, mm. and you can create a specific tutoring sessions for you based on how you did on the test. Oh, wow. So if I did well in the uh, mathematics area mm. and I need more help in the other concentrated area, I could say, I'm going to be taking the SAT in two months. I'd like to have practice three times a week for 45 minutes a week. And I would like to get an email to remind me to practice those things. Oh. That service is all provided free. Mm. And so there's great opportunity for students to, if they're motivated, yes. right, yeah. to get some good practice, and that would be available for all students. I, I think that's such a, a foundation uh, advice for our community, and all, all communities throughout, really, is, is let's say on the 10th grade, when they're 10th grade, if they take the PSAT, they would be able to kind of focus on the area that would need during that year and take another test uh, in the junior and senior, or maybe twice during junior, junior so that they will get the best out of those right. tests for the exams, oh, uh, entrance. That's that's great. And what would be some of the, Is it are there books that they can kind of pre-study, or is this something that they can order on Amazon, or, or, or is there things that they can they can kind of say to a parents maybe and say, right. you know, you might right. want to get that book for them. You're dating yourself. <laughs> Kids don't use books anymore. <laughs> oh, true. Um, they, there certainly are books out there. There's yeah. lots of things out there yeah. that you can purchase through Amazon and sure. things like that for SAT review or ACT review. Mm. Um, some of the things now are digital platforms sure. where students can do the interactive things such as the Khan Academy mm. College Board. Sure. The, the writers of SAT have practice tests. The ACT company has that as well. Mm. And so um, there are certainly resources. I think I find a lot of high school students don't bother looking for those resources or spending time on those resources. So I, I would say that there's resources, but if a student's not committed of trying to do mm -hmm. them, then the resource doesn't matter. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and I think um, for our community and, and the diaspora group community, if a parent's kind of uh, all community leaders have a, a uh, you know, these are the good programs. If your son or daughter is in 10th grade and 11th grade, these are the good programs that you might want to, you know, look into. I think that will be, uh, that, those those advice will be absolutely terrific for us. Um, 
in the uh, in college part, in college exam or college entrance part, when they do that application, when they fill out applications, when should a student start to look for college applications or entrance application? Is this in the junior year or mostly in their senior year? And the second part of that question would be, uh, what are some areas that they can also focus on, not just on the academic part of it, but maybe community uh, uh, volunteering? Does that play a part in that at all? That's a big question. Okay. So I'll try to tackle it in, in a way that makes sense. Um, first of all, I believe firmly that preparation for life begins in the home. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Um, Families that are providing support for their children, mm -hmm. loving their children, are obviously foundational things to set them up for learning. And so when we look at the college process, there isn't a specific date, mm -hmm. right? We would say um, it's a process. And I think specifically the nuts and bolts of it, mm -hmm. the majority of that occurs your senior year. Mm -hmm. But the preparation for that begins back in grade school. Sure. Are the students reading on grade level? Are they completing their work? Do they understand scientific questions that are occurring? Um, in high school, when you enter high school, I think the most important thing for students to understand is the classes they're taking mm. are helping them create their transcript. And the transcript is the profile, the academic profile that they're building mm. in order for them to when they apply to college, just say, here's my transcript, right? The transcript includes all of the classes you've taken in high school, the grades you've received, and your attendance. So when you apply to colleges, besides completing the application, they'll request your transcript. It's your academic history from your high school. And that transcript is really gonna drive the majority of the decision in, re in response to the colleges. Um, I know we spoke a little bit earlier about the SAT and ACT. Um, since COVID, we have found, and many colleges across the country have de-emphasized or are no longer using the SAT or ACT as the only consideration for colleges. Um, but they've always looked at the whole picture. Sure. But when they're building um, applications and things, we have found that fewer schools are looking at those SAT marks. Now, they can still be important for some schools and, some, and for some scholarship programs still utilize them at times. Probably a strong SAT or ACT score would be around a 1200. That oftentimes is a cut point for scholarship monies um, for universities. So building your academic history is important. In response to the college process, going to college visits, right? And that can be a family that is on a vacation in a new town. Maybe they wanna swing by the local university and just go to the bookstore, walk on campus, things like that. Tell a student, hey, college is important. We'd like you to consider your options in college. Um, during high school, we strongly recommend that the students do some college visits. Um, that's where you would formally uh, call the admissions office. The admissions office are kind of the welcome committee or the people that kind of determine sure. who gets into their school or not. And so the admissions offices are very open to doing tours and things. Mm -hmm. um, our school, as well as I'm sure many other schools, have opportunities for students to go on college visits. Um, at different points throughout the year. So college visits, I think, are very important. Um, I think we, well, we have, and I know a lot of schools have, college rep visits. Mm -hmm. So we have a classroom designated during our lunchtime. We have different college reps come in and talk about their specific programs and opportunities. Students, if you have schools that have college rep um, reps coming, go to those. Mm -hmm. They are so worth that because you get to meet somebody from the college, you get to ask them some questions, and sometimes they share information from you that's not on their website, mm. right? They might say, well, we've got a scholarship opportunity right. for students in this category or students that want to major in this area. Right, right. And so 
talking with people that work at the colleges is going to be a great benefit mm -hmm. because you're getting firsthand information from people that oh, work at those schools. Um, do you want me to talk a little more about the senior year timeline? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, <clears throat> should I back up to ninth grade? Um, oh, yeah. All right, yes. so let's let's start. Yes. So, um, when I spoke a few minutes ago about the transcript, yes. Um, each semester, classes and grades are captured on that transcript. So what you're trying to do is build a strong resume or a strong transcript. Mm -hmm. um, I think... When we say maybe a, a GPA? Okay. okay. Yep. Is, that, is, that, I, is that what you mean by a strong? Well, I two things. Okay. The courses you're taking, okay. the course selection, yes. and the grade point average. Okay. So when I say course selection, you obviously want to take courses that are required for high school graduation. Right. In Indiana, we have the Academic Honors Diploma. Mm. That's the highest diploma, mm. and that's the one that would give you the most opportunities mm. after high school graduation. Many states have different levels of mm -hmm. diplomas, mm -hmm. so that would be specific to each state. Sure. So when you're looking at requirements for graduation, Four years of English is usually a minimum, sure, right? Three to four years of mathematics would mm -hmm. be minimum. Three to four years of science. Mm -hmm. Three to four years of social studies. Mm -hmm. Many schools have a physical education and sure. health component. Sure. And then many colleges uh, would like students to have at least two years of a world language, mm -hmm. foreign language on their transcript. Mm -hmm. um, Indiana's diploma for the honors diploma requires three years of a foreign language mm -hmm. on the diploma. Mm -hmm. And so what freshmen don't always understand mm -hmm. is that when I'm in this English class and I'm getting a grade, if I get a grade of a D, that's on my transcript. So we're trying right. to avoid D. Right. Right? Absolutely. We're trying to get A's and B's. Absolutely. Now not everybody's gonna get all A's, our top performers sure. do, but sometimes that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to balance between what makes sense for the students as far as their abilities mm -hmm. and get them placed in those appropriate classes. Sure. And if they're doing well, we want them to stretch up. Um, I feel like we work really hard at our, our school about stretching students. Um, and so... Um, and that would mean, for example, AP classes or AP courses, you things to speak like that. a little bit sure, about that? Sure, okay. absolutely, absolutely. So... Lots and of, how does that help overall? Right. So lots of schools, we were a large high school, and so we have a right. lot of course offerings sure. in our high school. Um, a lot of times kids say, I need to take AP classes. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, right? Mm -hmm. AP stands for Advanced Placement. Mm -hmm. Those are college-level classes taught at the high school by a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, the curriculum is fairly standard throughout the country. So if I take... AP United States History in Indiana, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same course as it is in California. Oh, wow. um, and then everybody at the end of that course mm -hmm. takes an exam. The exams are generally three hours long, and it's a standard exam across the country. Oh. So everybody in the country takes the U.S. History exam on the same day. Oh, wow. um, and we can't release the students until the time zone from the West Coast allows those students to be in <laughs> oh, the that's exam. that's interesting, yes. And so it's scored yeah. on a one through five scale. Okay. A three or higher is generally considered a passing score on the okay. AP exam. Uh -huh. So what that does is that might allow a student, mm -hmm. when they look at your transcript, remember that it'll say that you've had AP US history. Right. In fact, the AP tests are the same people who do the SAT. It's through the college board. Mm -hmm. And so if you have some AP classes on your transcript and you get your scores from the college board and send those directly to the college, they can give you college credit for those. Oh. I have a daughter who is a freshman at a nearby college who got a qualifying score in her AP literature class and she does not have to take English for her major in college. Wow. Okay? Wow. So AP can help you get a leg up when you're in college, and it can also save you some time and money. Absolutely. 
Um, and so students not in many schools have mm -hmm. AP offerings. Here we have mm -hmm. many, many AP offerings. Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to how do I perform on that test? Mm -hmm. and, and then every college in the country has an AP policy. Mm -hmm. So some colleges are not as nice as others, mm -hmm. but some colleges will accept a three for this exam and it'll equate to this course at the university, this oh, equivalent okay. course. Others will say it has to be a four or higher. And then there are instances where colleges won't accept that, but they'll accept the, that as an elective credit. They mm -hmm. won't accept it for an equivalent class. Does that's that make a, sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. So um, if possible, if your skill set is appropriate, mm -hmm. um, taking some AP classes can be beneficial. Uh, absolutely. So when you hear AP, that's what they're talking about. Good explanation. I think some of us adults, when we see AP mean Associated Press, <laughs> that is not what we're talking. We're talking school, advanced placement. Uh, there, uh, great. Can I speak on yes. um, dual credit? Yes. Are you familiar with dual credit? No, I'm not, actually. Okay. I am not. Many colleges, or many high schools, sorry, have opportunities within high school for dual credit classes. Mm. And when we say that we think dual, right, we think two. Right. So these are classes that you can take in high school that allow you to put our classes and grades on the high school transcript. Mm. Also, you are creating a college transcript. So here at Perry Viridian, we yes. have um, MOUs or agreements mm -hmm. with three different colleges specific to courses. So we have an agreement with Indiana University in mm -hmm. Bloomington, mm -hmm. I Vincennes University, and um, Ivy Tech. And so students um, can take dual credit classes here. So there are teachers in our building that are certified as college instructors. Right. Um, the qualification for that is a master's in a content area or a master's plus 18 credit hours of college in a core area of the subject that they are teaching. So we have a number of teachers that are um, able to teach college classes. Okay. Specifically in Perry, there are schools that have early college programs. Mm -hmm. And if you, your school has an early college program, there are students here that can get an associate's degree at the same time they're getting their high school diploma. So that when they graduate from high school, they're getting their two-year associate's degree. My goodness. So that that's, the that's landscape's a, changed a lot. That that you can that, there's so many options, right. so many things right. that that we can get uh, that get that get our, our students into.